All right, welcome to Spiked Up, episode three. Still in quarantine life. Uh, Darren, I see you've gotten the memo to do the fresh haircut. It looks very good, I like it. Yeah, I joined you in the, uh, you inspired me with your haircut, so. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks nice and uh, yeah, quarantine day, what is it? What are we on, like 1,000 what? I don't know. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> Two million. I was, uh, I, I wonder, do you, you know, for me, do you wake up, have a good cry, and then you go make an ego waffle for the kids, you know? That's my life these days. <laughs> Is that your typical morning? <laughs> That's my typical morning. Um, but uh, hey, and by the way, I've, uh, I've sent a couple links, um, hoping maybe someone joins our Zoom call. I don't know. And, and, and if they Ooh. don't, um, I, um, we'll see, but... I might, I, I might have a surprise for you in a, in a few minutes. And then if they just well, after them, your, uh, after your Matt Ryan. Yeah. So, and, and it, who is talk is about next door neighbor? Yeah. yeah who next door neighbor. Yeah, so next door neighbor. <laughs> we didn't talk about that last, uh, but yeah, Matt, um, I have had contact with Matt and, and he's very sorry that he, that he, that he goes through this, but, um, I'm not sure if you've talked to Sir Alex Ferguson or not, but, um, but that, that is, um, it, it's not Matt Ryan, but hopefully, hopefully it's someone that uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But yeah. um, <laughs> I thought, you know, how's quarantine going for you still? Are you, are you still surviving? Yeah, just about. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, like everybody, it has its ups and downs. But, you know, it's good to spend some time with the, with the kids. So uh, that's been the one positive. I know. It, it is. But I do, I, I, I still, like I said on that episode one, like just, it is such a new, it's the new normal because like you and I, you know, you, you travel, but then also, you know, I, I wonder, I don't, I know you guys do the schoolwork probably better than, than we do, but um, man, we're just taking a phone call, like it's so different now than a normal, you know, a normal day in life, I just, you know, you would be in your office, you know, kind of, on your computer, on your phone. And now, you know, for me, I, I have to pace. I have to pace because my wife's in the, in the, in the house and I've, I've, I've walked so many laps around my house and like through the you know, driveway and everything where I, there's a hole in my foot. I have a hole in my foot because <laughs> I go barefoot. So I've got, I had to quit that. I mean, I, I, how do you take a phone call? Are, are you, you, are you, can you be stationary? You know me, I'm kind of fidgety. Yeah, no, I'm not too bad. I'm up in, we're lucky we've got an apartment that's sort of above the, the garage, so it's a separate unit. So that's where I am at the moment. But the only downside now is James, one of the twins, has just realized there's a doorbell down the bottom he can press. So if we hear a doorbell going on constantly during the podcast, that's just James <laughs> trying to wind up daddy. I, uh, my kids have also discovered the doorbell and it's driving. It, it, it's funny you say that because it drives me absolutely nuts. And it's like the ring one. So I get the... I get the notification like, oh, there's motion at your front door. So I think it's like the Amazon guy, but it's just my kids doing, what is it, ring, what is it, something, what is it, uh, ding dong dash or whatever. <laughs> we call it knock door run in England. Yeah. Ours is ding dong dash. How's the TPL going? How's the TPL? Yeah, good. Although there's a slight four in our plan because the boys love playing each other, but there's severe, I don't know where they get their competitive instinct from, but. If one of them yeah, doesn't win, <laughs> if one of them doesn't win, we have severe meltdown. So to be honest, every game in the last sort of 20 they played ends up as a draw because I have to fix it to make sure <laughs> nobody, nobody gets upset. I know. So I'm not sure it's a betting proposition it's going to work. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder where they get that competitive nature from. I have no clue. I have no clue <laughs> at all. Uh, hey, what about the field day? Do you guys do your field day? We kind of did. It was it was it was a it was a nasty Easter, so we kind of had to hide the Easter eggs inside and do like an indoor Easter egg hunt. But we haven't we haven't done the full field day yet. I'm 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 working on it. Um, also, I'm gonna I'm gonna disappoint you too when I get to my checklist. Um, my as I have I have failed miserably. Um, but I was I was uh, speaking of Easter. I, I I always like to ask you you know kind of different. Um, I love to hear your banter. England versus USA. How how does Easter is is there an Easter does, does the Easter Bunny come in in England? How, how does that work? Yeah, look, I mean, so it's typical, isn't it? Everything USA compared to England, like everything America is just bigger. So you know, <laughs> Halloween, you just do it on steroids. It's ridiculous, and it's the same with Easter. So Easter in England is 
you know, a chocolate egg. So you might get a chocolate egg from your mum and dad, and that's it. Like none of this convoluted, complicated Easter egg hunt, complete with, you know, gift at the end of it. I mean, to your point, we did the Easter egg hunt indoors, but man, it took like three hours to put all the eggs together. And I know, and, and uh, you know, uh, we, we practiced safe distancing or whatever you call it, but um, we did have our, our, we had some family over and they brought eggs and we had eggs. It was like 200 eggs to hide. At some point, you're just like throwing them on the ground to like, yeah. like there's nowhere to hide them. It's, it's crazy. No, I'm with you. I think you're exactly right. America has overblown all the holidays, for sure. I must admit, I was doing the clues like a cryptic tweet, sort of cryptic clue for the twins for the first egg. After a while, I realized, one, there's too many eggs to do it for, and two, that it's going to go straight over their heads anyway. Did like, you, kind of, uh, do you do, uh, do you do, do you like a golden egg where um, there's money in it or anything? And you hide it like extra special or? No, I hadn't thought of that one. We just had like a, they had a bigger present right at the end. So there's a, you know, 20 mini eggs and then they got a nerf crossbow and arrow, which again, I regretted as soon as we gave them that because I just got peppered. I told them the story of Robin Hood and then I was basically, you know, the sheriff of Nottingham for the rest of the day getting peppered yeah. with arrows. Well, hey, the new PE game is, uh, what are you, the biathlon. It's like the biathlon. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> and um, my other thing, like how, how um, you know, you're cooped up. I thought my, my thing is, you know, I feel like we have so much more trash. We cook so many more meals inside and, and it's probably good, but I mean, you know me, I, I kind of like to be able to drive through and yeah. <laughs> keto here and there from the gas station. But um, <laughs> do you, do you, me, I get so insane when my wife cooks something that just stinks the entire house up. What, what do you, um, do you have a pet peeve like that or anything like uh, that when, when, when that happens? No, I mean, I'm still readjusting, like I said, to fat. I'm by by the way, our special guest is arriving. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so is this Bob, Bob the neighbor from next door who we got coming in? Well, he's connecting. <laughs> And the video is going to be on in a second. I'm very intrigued here. <laughs> I'm trying to think who it might be. Someone that I go Probably way back Carlos. It's not Carlos. Carlos not Bocanegra. Carlos. Not Carlos Bocanegra. Mike, do you hear us? I can hear you. Oh, hey. my good friend, Mike Vick. <laughs> you know, when I'm getting better with technology as the days go on. I thought it'd be fun to just have a surprise Zoom guest. And, um, you know, Mike, you and I go back to 2004. You're, you're one of my favorite people I've ever worked with. And I think um, Thank you. probably the most talented person I've ever uh, witnessed. But it was, I thought it'd be fun to have you on. And, and, and how's quarantine going for you? Uh, it's been good, man. Um, as long as I'm with my family and, and as long as they're they're safe and, and sound and, and close to me, uh, I, I feel like we can uh, we can manage just like everyone else in the world. We just gotta continue to follow protocol and, and not get, you know, impatient or overzealous. You know, you get used to um, living a certain type of way, and and this is a very humbling experience, but not just to us, to everybody around the world. So. Um, we're trying to be an example. We're trying to do more family activities, which is, you know, almost uh, impossible not to do. Um, and it's something I, I've been wanting to do for, for years and years. And uh, I finally had got the downtime, you know, as ironically as it, as it may be, uh, you know, how, how crazy it, is it may have came about. You know, it, it is what it is, man. And well, we're just trying to live life as much as uh, the best way we can right now. Like, great to see you. So what family activities are you doing? Give us some examples. Uh, yesterday, uh, we walked down to the pier. Um, we, we get out and walk. Um, we ride bikes. Um, my wife is, is learning how to trade online. Um, so oh. I've been watching her do that. Uh, but the kids, we've been um, we'll be doing, doing puzzles with my son. Um, you know, I'm living on a golf course, so I, I might walk out and hit a, hit a hole or two, you know, and play by myself. You know, they'll walk back with me, walk back two holes because I'm on 18. So they'll walk back to 17 and 18 with me and we'll all play 17 and 18 together. 
Um, so man, we 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 we've been doing a lot, man. It's um, I never thought you could get this much accomplished within the household, and obviously with my young daughters and and, and my oldest son, you know, being uh, very heavily involved in you know the audio digital type of stuff, and you know all the computers and everything, the technical you know, aspects of the world, I learned how to use Zoom. So that's how I came into this, uh, <laughs> in this video conference. Mike, a, a little birdie, uh, who you know very well, Kevin Winston told me that your golf game has gotten a lot better. Because I, I remember when I first met you, 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 your golf game wasn't great. I heard I heard you got the PGA Tour Superstore. You got yeah, fitness, they hooked you got me some... up. Yeah, I got hooked up, <laughs> thanks to um, Mr. Blake and the crew. Um, <laughs> allowed me to go in and uh and and, and shop till i drop you know I, but one thing i didn't do i didn't take advantage of it i got the things that i needed rear range for things in my bag and uh i can't say it dropped my scores as of right now but uh yes uh doing really well on the golf course whenever i can get out um the golf courses are open down here um in virginia which is where i'm at right now and uh you know <laughs> that's something that can't be taken away from us yeah. for an avid golfer that can't be taken away so at least you can get out there and social distance yourself you know you can ride in your own car and you know if you choose to get out um you know it's a, it's a easier way to go about it and, and do it and be safe at the same time mike i don't know if you got the special discount that i got so when i joined the company arthur said oh you've got to go and get yourself fitted at pga because he had his tournament we're going to play in yeah uh, he said look you know you'll get a discount go along there so I went along yeah. and they're brilliant, aren't they? You do the testing, they fit you yeah. for the clubs. And I yeah. found the perfect clubs. These pink clubs are amazing. I go to pay for them and say, you know, I'm Darren Eels, president of Atlanta United. I get the discount and they're like, oh, Darren, nice to meet you. You don't actually get a discount on the pink clubs. They're the one clubs <laughs> we don't give a discount. So they totally wow. stitch me up. <laughs> wow, you got to give Arthur a hard time. For that. <laughs> I did that with a tennis racket one time. And they're like, oh, this is the one brand that doesn't uh, get you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, when you when you when you're dealing with TaylorMade and Mizuno, they, they you see uh, <laughs> King and Callaway, they send you over to the. I won't disrespect any brands because I love all brands of golf. So you know, they they send you in another section. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, um, you know this is a soccer podcast. We're Atlanta United. What did you ever play soccer? I'm just curious. No, I never played soccer. Uh, when I was growing up, we didn't have those type of programs where we could learn to play. Um, but watching uh, some of the younger guys up under me come up, uh, they were very into it. And uh, they started a soccer league and had a program, uh, which was like 20 minutes away from where I grew up. And they seemed to be having fun, uh, learning a lot from it. The footwork was uh, amazing. Uh, I, I was about 16 years old at the time, and I felt as if I would have had that at the age of 10, 11, 12, then I would have been much better in my run game uh, than I was you know, when I was in high school. So. Uh, soccer was always something that was intriguing. I love the fast pace. I love um, the intensity, and, and, and I love the competition. And and you have attended an Atlanta United match, uh, correct? Yes, correct. What did, what did you think? I mean, anything? I had a great time. I mean, you know, my head was like, you know, I was like this the whole time, and, and you know, just trying to follow the ball and, and trying to pinpoint who. Uh, the marquee players were on the field. That was really cool. And, uh, you know, not only myself, but my wife and my kids had a great time as well, sitting, up with, sitting in the box with Arthur. We had a, the perfect view, and the crowd was into it, and, and they won the game, which was great. And uh, it was just exciting, man. It's, it's a cool sport, very cool. I, I even play FIFA, uh, you know, with my friends and online. So, yeah, I, I know some of the rules. You know, I'm not an expert at it. I'm not... I'm not genius when it comes to it but yeah i know a little bit now what do you think michael to the supporter section you know the crazy fans we have behind the goal that basically stand yeah, up the whole was, game it's yeah that was that was wild i mean i think every stadium needs a section where you have <laughs> you know just some crazies over there where they just they get the crowd into a win lose or draw you know they uh they, they keep they keep the hype up do you think that's the closest thing to like, or, or the closest thing you've seen to that is Inner Sandman when uh, at, at VT? <laughs> oh man, you know what? You know, now that you mentioned it, I think uh, after seeing that, that intensity that came from that group of people, um, the energy that they brought to the stadium, 
Uh, it matches Sandman to some degree, but Sandman is on a totally different level. I think we might be one of one when it comes to um, just crowd participation and, and just getting people involved to, to bring the team out and get them, get them going. No, it's I, interesting I, that, because one of the closest things, you know, as we set up Atlanta United and got that fan atmosphere, it was that college football mentality. I think yeah. it's the closest in America yeah. that you get to that because – once you're a Virginia Tech fan, you're always a Virginia Tech yeah. fan. And, yeah, you know, you, you, and so you have that passion. It's sort of, uh, it's in your blood. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Mike, I was thinking, um, I did some research today. I was, um, I was thinking, you know, you know, you being from, you know, the Hampton Roads, Newport News area, I look at some of the athletes that have come out of there. And, and by the way, Darren, can, he'll tell us, you know, he's got some connections to, to the Hampton Roads area as well but i was looking alan iverson you uh uh geez, i mean ronald curry you know tyrod taylor, Ty Rod taylor you name it i was wondering like if you built a soccer team out of that i mean who who would be who would be the striker who would be you know uh who, who would be who would be on that team um obviously if the striker is the guy who uh, and excuse me for not knowing, <laughs> you know, I won't call it ignorance. Uh, just having paid enough attention. If the striker is the guy who's supposed to score, we're going to put Aaron, we're going to put Allen Iverson in that position <laughs> because I'm pretty sure he'll be the guy that, it sounds like he's the guy that needs to maneuver and, and needs to, you know, be the focal point of the team or the ball handler. I don't know. Yeah, but I kind of had, had you in the midfield. I think I had. Uh, I'm, I'm looking right now. I had Cam Chancellor, maybe as the you know center back. Yeah, yeah he, he's the he's the more physical guy. Him and Bruce Smith, because Bruce Smith got good Bruce feet. Smith, Bruce Smith. And he'll knock the hell out you. And so we got Gabby Douglas too. Gabby Douglas could be in there as a winger. You know, the gymnast. No, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll make we'll make Gabby the goalie. <laughs> Gabby be the goalie. She look like she could be nice and nimble and quick with her feet. She could. Yeah, she can eliminate all goals. And then I'm the guy, you know, when the guy break with the with, with the soccer ball and he's just in the open field and so it's just him and another guy one-on-one, I'm the guy chasing him yeah. so I can make sure I, I chase You're him. You're the down. winger. You're the nah. winger. Yeah, I'm the who winger. Was the, yeah, who was the, the touchdown? Winger. Was it Minnesota, Mike? Where was your touchdown you scored, the amazing one for the Falcons um, where you just left everyone for dead? Yeah, Was that yeah, Minnesota? It, or yeah, that was, there. That, was, that was Minnesota. So um, the guys ran I'm, into each other. <laughs> yes, that's, that'll be me. <laughs> it's one of the best clips of all time, by the way. <laughs> uh, you know what, man? It's one that I never thought it would be shown this much to this day. I mean, every time I turn around, somebody's talking about it or bringing it uh, up, man. And it's pretty cool to have a, a, a space in sports. I can see now Mike up. picking the ball up on the center circle, you know, <laughs> ball at his feet, just <laughs> colliding into each other as he's it's faster. Than... Darren, I'll have to oh, show you, too, the, the clip that I've never seen in person, like I've never, probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in person was Mike was Superman and literally floated into the end zone against the Carolina Panthers on Sunday night football. And I, 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 no one will ever be able to show me anything like that. Again. I got lucky. I got lucky. <laughs> Thank God. God was on my side. Arthur rewarded, me, Arthur rewarded me with a new contract after that game. So I never forget that. I never forget that day and time in my life. Uh, you know, it was certainly uh, games that I played in uh, where you know all I wanted to do was win and please the crowd and and, and make the organization proud. And uh, you know, there were moments where they changed my life, and uh, you know, I couldn't really fathom it or understand it at the time. You know, being 25, 26, 27, but man, when you look back on it now, being 39. You know, uh, those are the great memories that go in the memory bank. It's funny you say that because I, I actually, I, I wikipedia you today and just to get some, just to see how old you were. And you and I are like 15 days apart. And yeah. when you and I were both really young in the organization, were we? Yeah, we were pups. We were definitely, uh, you know, very green, man. And then just kind of looking up and looking at everybody like, Yes, sir. No, sir. I do I whatever know. it takes to make I you know. guys happy. I know. I'm, 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 I think Mike's yeah. definitely aged better, though. Oh, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Mike looks a lot better. Hey, Darren, tell him, tell him your connection to Hampton Roads. Yeah, no, so that was uh, the first place I played once I left university in the yeah. States was in Hampton Roads Mariners. So a base Virginia Beach. I had, a, I had a year and a summer spent in Virginia Beach. And there's definitely worse places you could yeah. be, uh, be based for the summer. 
No, I had a great yeah. time. Loved it. We're good. To know, it's good to know that you're one of us, man. I actually played for the Ferguson Mariners, um, <laughs> which was the high school before I tr transferred to uh, the high school I, I graduated from. So, you know, I'm a Mariner as well. There we go. <laughs> it's good to know. So that's good. That could be a good five-a-side team, then. We'll have Mike <laughs> in the middle. I'll be with uh, Alan Iverson up front, <laughs> just feeding off his scraps. We have to stretch you out real good. Make sure you ready. <laughs> no hamstring tear. We always talk about how we think we're athletes, but uh, we're we're deaf. We we play a staff game, Mike. If you're ever down, you'll have to. When this thing ends, you have to come play with us. It'll be good. No uh, doubt. I love to. Well, hey, Mike. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna let you leave, and and I, I I cannot thank you enough for joining. It means a lot to us. Yeah. It's great to see you again. Uh, I miss you, and um, you know, thanks. I, I'm, I'm being from the heart of hearts, you know, you were, you were on Nike commercials, you were the most famous person, one of the most famous people in the world, and you always treated me, you know, like a, a true human being, and, 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 and I cannot thank you enough for that, and, I, and, and it still shows to this day that you're, you still do that, so thank you so much. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, man. It was an amazing time, and i never forget it. Anytime you guys need me to hop on, man, y'all know where to find me. All right. We'll let you know. Like you and your family, stay me, safe. Baby. Yeah, stay safe. All right, man. Y'all be good. All right. You can just leave, Mike. All right. Just hit leave meeting. Oh, that was good. Well, you definitely surprised them. Huh? It was. <laughs> All right. So I can have Mikey edit this part. We can start again. But I know. Oh, to... I think we should keep it in. I like this real life reaction. So <laughs> I am impressed. I didn't think it was going to be. Uh, your next door neighbor or, <laughs> or not so, to be rude. <laughs> so I, um, I, I, I sent a text and I got a response and I was like, hey, Darren, I might can get Mike back on. And you were like, let's go. So that was pretty awesome. And, he, and, and to be honest, he, is, um, he, he was being asked to do a million different things in his life um, and, in his, and in his world. And he was a superstar. He was on FIFA, or not FIFA, the Madden. He was the biggest, you know, on Nike and everything. But he always did treat us, and, and we asked him to do something or a fun video or anything. You know, he was, he was great. Yeah, and I obviously, you know, different era from, from my time here, but I still remember the last time I think I met Mike was halftime. He was coming on at the um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So it was him, Roddy, in the car. Yeah. Um, now, we've been talking before. I've never heard it as loud as when he came out. I know, I know. The half time yeah. there, it was crazy because I think it was the first time, you know, he'd been back in front of the fans and it was, it was so loud. That was great. That was great. Well, after that... Well, you've raised the bar for me now. So, so basically, it's my job I to think it's your turn record. next week, Darren. Who we got? Come on. Oh, wow. Well, that's going to be hard to Come beat. Come on. Uh, that's going to be tough to beat. It's going to be tough to beat. So that's your challenge now. Speaking of challenges, we can go through the checklist. I, I completely failed. I didn't feel anything. I, I tried to learn the French one the, from Home Alone, Les Complaisant, or whatever. I, I don't know. <laughs> I was a disaster on that. So... I'll, I'll well, I'm feeling quite out. smug because I did sew a button. Oh, nice! Sewed <laughs> a button onto a yeah, pair of shorts that I'd been meaning <laughs> to do it, and took me forever. I love it. I love it. Um, well, I, I think uh, my last thing I wanted to do. I thought it'd be fun um, you know, since we had Mike on. I, I I I saw I saw this on social, and it's been kind of trending, and I wanted because you have some really funny stories about um, kind of the stadiums you've been to. So I thought I'd like to do your first stadium, the last stadium you attended, your favorite stadium you've attended, Mercedes-Benz not included, um, and the worst stadium you've ever been to. So I'm going to kick it to first you and then I have mine. Stadium. First stadium you've ever attended in your life. So first stadium for me was um, a team called Chesterfield but it was my team growing up. So I was brought up in Cambridge in the sort of east of England, bit of a posh area. Chesterfield's up north where my dad's from. And my dad forced me from a young age to support Chesterfield. So you can imagine it. At school, everybody's Liverpool, Manchester United fans, and I'm Chesterfield. No one even knows where the city is, yet alone who the team is. But as my dad said at the time, it's character building. And to be fair to him, like he's right, because... You know, later on in life, Chesterfield were one of these Cinderella teams. They got to the semi-final of the FA Cup. 
I was at the time, actually, it was when I was playing at uh, Hampton Roads. And I got permission to fly home to watch that semi-final because this was never, ever going to happen again in my lifetime. But what's cool is I know everybody I ever knew growing up at school would have been thinking, oh, that's Darren's team. So, you know, sometimes you've got to just have that team that's a bit more obscure. Yeah. But their ground, their old ground, so they've got a new ground now. Their old ground I went to, it was your typical, so stadium right in the middle of housing. So most of the old soccer stadiums in England are just right slap bang in the middle of the city centre. And I can remember going to the game, I'd have been probably five at the time. And my dad would carry a big box with him. You go to the turnstiles. If you're a kid, they just lift you over. You never have to pay. They would just, <laughs> it's like an unwritten rule. If you were like under 10, they, you could just go in for free. And then there'd be this box and I'd stand on the box because this was before you had seating at stadiums. It was always all okay. seats. But I, I remember thinking this is the best thing ever. You know, now I look back, it's like a terrible stadium. But, but I, you know, that's awesome. How about, uh, so last stadium attended, I think, is both for us, is Azteca. That's right, yeah. So uh, we managed to recreate the Maradona goal, which we had. <laughs> which that place, that, but... I mean, that, there was so much, when you did walk in there, there was so much history in that place. You could just feel it, you know? Yeah. It was, yeah, was uh, That's not a bad one to have as your, as yeah. your last one. All right, best stadium? The best stadium. Can't have Mercedes-Benz Stadium, obviously, although that is the best stadium in the world. So for me... Interesting one. Mine is one that's no longer around. So for me, the old Wembley. And the old Wembley wasn't that good a stadium in terms of facilities. The new Wembley is much better. But because of the history, so I was very fortunate. I, um, I was a mascot for, so they used to play the Oxford University against Cambridge University uh, Blues game at Wembley Stadium. And they were doing training in Cambridge near where I was. So I was I went as mascot with the team. So I actually went on the old Wembley pitch for the final of the, the Oxbridge game when I was, I think at the time, about six years old. I was a ball boy there for England when Gascoigne was the player. Um, but what was it? It had these two twin towers. It was just iconic. You think England won the World Cup there. Every FA Cup final had been played there. And it was just that feeling of, you know, this was the cathedral of, of soccer, really. And even though you have the new stadium, it's just not the same. Yeah. So... The old Wembley right. for me. Worst stadium. <sighs> and so worst could be rated different ways. I think for me, the worst stadium is where Chicago Fire used to play. I and mean, not that it's a bad stadium, but just its location for for Chicago. I mean, it's miles out. It was miles outside of the of the city centre. And of course, we understand why it was built because that was the days when. The theory was you tried to get your um, stadiums in suburbia because you were trying to get the soccer mum. But I felt really sorry for Chicago Fire because it was so difficult for them to get fans because they were just miles outside the city centre. And obviously, I was really looking forward to going to Soldier Field. We were going to be the first team, Atlanta United, to play at Soldier Field. And I do think that's going to reignite Chicago in the city, playing in that central location. So I think, you know, for all of those reasons, I'll give it to the Chicago Fire Stadium. Oh, you're going to tell me about that place in Greece you told me about. <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't worse, but that was, so that was Pauk. So Pauk, um, Europa League game, Spurs, we were playing a Europa League game against Pauk. And it's known as, I need to, you know, I think it's called, they call it Welcome to Hell. Basically, it's <laughs> a really tough place to play. They have the pyrotechnics, basically it looks like the whole stadium's on fire. But, but we turned up there for the game. And you can imagine, they've got one side of the stadium where the home supporters go. And they were getting people, they were dropping down rope and lifting people up to get them <laughs> in free. And we're talking like 40 feet high. I mean, it's the craziest thing you've ever seen, but people were doing this just to get in the stadium free. And that was, that was probably one of the most intimidating atmospheres. But actually, it's quite a cool venue in yeah, terms of for atmosphere. Sure. For sure. I kind of felt like that in Honduras. Like, I was... This, this, we were in the press box and we were with the fans and I was like, man, this is intense. I'm scared, but this is awesome. You know? <laughs> so my what first stadium, uh, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, Braves game. Uh, I was probably like, you know, five or six. And uh, I still remember it's the first time I ever saw like a trough, like, and I couldn't believe like my dad's like, no, you can just like pee on the wall. You know, like, you, can, you, you, know you don't have to have a real bathroom. I'm like, this is nice. Um, so I like that. 
so that's my first stadium. Last stadium, Azteca. That stadium's tough. I've been to, I really enjoyed Wrigley Field. I really enjoy Fenway Park. Um, so I might, I might give it to, I might give it to Wrigley because it's nothing like it where, you know, they'll, you know, Wrigleyville outside and then you come in and, and, and you're just, you feel like you're right on top of the player. So I really like Wrigley Field. The worst stadium I've ever been to is absolutely, and, and I'm glad I can say this because they're not going to play there anymore, is Oakland County Alameda Stadium or wherever, wherever the Raiders yeah. play, right? So you, you walk in and it is, it, you feel like you're a, you know, the scene from Friday. Like it is insane driving in that place. And then I never forget, we went in and so we would, we would be wearing suits and we'd have to change in our like, you know, attire to, to work the games, you know, the, the equipment guys. And the equipment guy, like the, the clubhouse guy who works for the Raiders, he would hand you a thumbtack because they didn't even have coat hangers. You would just take a coat. Uh, you would take a thumbtack and hang all your stuff on the wall. You just find a place to put a thumbtack, and I was like, "This," and the black hole. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was, it was a special place. And it's the same kind of thing you said is like the place that you know creates like. You kind of actually love going there every time. Yeah, because the black hole. And I remember one time this is like when we, but you know. This is how old I am, but like we had those <laughs> flip video cams. That was kind of like our first like, you know, GoPro or ways to get things on social. And yeah. I put my flip video cam to the black hole and I'm like, hey, I'm with the Falcons. Do you guys like the Falcons? And they're like, ah. I like it was <laughs> yeah. the best. They're just throwing, things, that way. throwing things at us. And it was it was so it was it was great. But I thought that would be. But you fun. mentioned Wrigley Field, so let me quickly tell you my Wrigley Field story. Yeah. Uh, first time I went there, Tottenham, we were on tour, so pre-season tour, and um, our last city we played in was Chicago. So they'd said, "Oh, we'll get someone. We want someone from the Spurs team to throw the opening pitch." So we did it as a social media. We'll get some of the players to to battle it out, and Harry Kane in the end was our best. You know, you know, picture of a ball. So we picked him, but he wasn't really getting into the first team at this stage. So we sort of let the Cubs know this, and they weren't that happy. And so anyway, we turn up, and uh, they've got—is um, it Eddie Vedder, the lead singer of Pearl yeah, Jam? Yeah, Pearl Jam. Yeah. So he's pitching before Harry, and then you know they sort of announce Harry. And I'm in the—we've got a box, and oh, my brain's gone dead. Who's the GM of the Cubs? Who was at the Red Sox? He's a legend Theo in Theo Epstein. Theo Epstein. Yep. So we're in our box. Theo Epstein's in the box next to us. And I'd looked in and there was like this whole box has got TVs everywhere. So I started talking to him and we were, you know, swapping stories. And he was explaining how he'd got every minor league team in his box and how they do all the scouting. And then they're going to throw the opening pitch. And I'm telling you, Harry throws an absolute strike straight down the middle. <laughs> so we were having a chat about, you know, because he didn't, no one knew him as a soccer player. I was like, well, we'll trade him to you. You know, you can have him for, <laughs> for your guys. Right, right. Fast forward a year from then, and Harry's like the biggest player in, in England. But it was just, yeah. uh, it was amazing, though. Firstly, for me, how historical the stadium is, like Wrigley and the whole sort of history behind it. But then Theo Epstein, like, it was amazing, like the level of detail they went into on their whole scouting once you started yeah. talking to him was, uh, was incredible. No, for sure. No, it's, that's good stuff. That's great stuff. All right. Well, I think this may do it for episode three. This is a memorable one. So it's on you now, Darren, your turn. Ball's in your court. I got Mike Vick. So ball's in your court. Yeah, no, leave that with me. Yeah, we thank Mike for showing up. That was good to him. And again, fans, everyone stay safe. And uh, yeah. I'll get my thinking cap on. And we'll get someone on for, uh, for the next show. All right. Well, stay safe, Darren. And I let, once again, thanks to all the people on the front line and, and everyone, you know, uh, trying to get us through this thing. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next week.